Hello and welcome to this um, session on multi-resolution analysis. When it comes to signal processing, if last 100 years were 100 years of Fourier transform, it's very firmly believed that the next 100 years are going to be 100 years of wavelet transform. And that's because wavelet has started dominating different walks of life. If you look at different standards with the likes of ZPEG, ZPEG became ZPEG 2000 and from 2000 onwards we have started using a biorthogonal 5 slash 3 tap of wavelets. In MPEG standards we have been making use of wavelet transform and different bases and kernel functions which are originated out of uh, wavelet theory. And if we carefully look and think about it as to why wavelet has started dominating uh, different walks and different applications, technological and engineering applications, then one serious reason behind that is multi-resolution analysis. And um, that makes the entire system scalable, that is the inherent advantage. However, the underlying mathematics is very interesting. And uh, in this session, we are going to expose ourselves to the framework of doing multi-resolution analysis. We are going to keep it restricted to one dimensional signals and if we can really understand the nuances, the nitty gritties of how multi-resolution analysis is done for one dimensional signals, then it's very easy to understand how that can be extended to separable kind of bases and convert it from 1D to 2D and from 2D to M different dimensions. So first things first, we will try and understand the framework of one dimensional multi-resolution analysis. We will move on to the board, understand the framework first and uh, quickly solve one problem to understand how that framework gets deployed towards solving some interesting real problems. Okay, so let us first of all put down the framework and the framework is very interesting. Uh, the mathematical notation is also very interesting and I am going to uh, kind of reproduce the maths as and how I write it so that it will be very clear in our minds as to what exactly are we trying to achieve. So let us say there is some signal and we are going to represent that signal as f of x and I am purposely using x as the variable. Uh, to indicate that it need not be necessarily time t. It could be any variable and f is my function of some independent variable x. And I want to represent this f of x using multi-resolution framework. The question is how do we go about doing that? And f of x is some function of x and the question is represent f of x in MRA style, which is multi resolution analysis style. So, let us first of all put down the framework and first things first, we will have to span the spaces since we are talking about multiple resolutions simultaneously. Uh, Let us say f of z of x would belong to v of z, where v of z are some subspaces and in order to be able to span these v of z subspaces, we will have to decide upon the scale of analysis. And let us say the scale of analysis is 1 upon 2 to the power z. So, the modern version of dyadic MRA demands different scales with the resolutions of either positive or negative integers uh, which are the powers of uh, 2 as the base. And let us say in order to be able to span these spaces, the span typically gets decided by the basis function or the kernel function and the kernel function would be uh, since we are talking about V of Z subspaces will require a low pass filter which typically gets uh, defined by the scaling function or the low pass filter that is phi of uh, let us say 2 to the power z of x minus k and this will be my orthogonal basis functions and to be able to convert this orthogonal basis into orthonormal kind of basis, we will put down this 
normalizing parameter of 2 to the power z by 2. So, this is my ortho normal basis function where 2 to the power z by 2 is the normalization parameter, x is the independent variable and k is responsible for doing the translation. So, the shifts or the translations on uh, the time axis or the x axis in this particular case would be governed by the translation parameter k. And if this orthonormal basis is going to decide upon the span, then using this as the complete span towards spanning v of z subspaces, now it is very easy to write down the framework. I can very well write down and specify that f of z of x is going to be equal to summation for all different k values in order to be able to span the entire subspace. So, let us say this k belongs to capital R and then it will be equal to some approximation coefficient. Let us call that approximation coefficient as alpha of j of k into 2 to the power j by 2 and once again the basis function. So, this will be the formula for f j of x. Now, the beauty lies in understanding how we can calculate alpha j k. Since I am talking about a low pass filter, how this low pass filter will help me achieve and calculate the approximation values which are captured by alpha j k. So, let us put down the formula for alpha j k in a very classical Cauchy Schwarz kind of a form. So, this alpha j k would originate out of the dot product and the integral of that dot product. So, I have this integral running from minus infinity to plus infinity and then we will take the dot product between the function which re gets represented and the kernel function or the basis function. So, the formula would look like this, it is f j of x into 2 to the power j by 2 and phi of 2 to the power j x minus k into d of x. Now, a very natural extension of this entire framework would be having some g j of x which typically belongs to w of j. If v of j represents all my low pass subspaces, then w of j would represent all my high pass subspaces and we know that v of j is typically equal to v of j minus 1 orthogonally added up with w of j minus 1. So, we will keep this as the thumb rule uh, for analyzing and looking at this entire framework. And if once again scale of analysis for w of j subspaces is going to be 1 upon 2 to the power j, then the span now will be achieved by looking at the kernel function which will be the high pass filter. And I can very well write this down as 2 to the power j by 2 into psi of 2 to the power j of x minus k. And now using this as the span, I can once again write down that g j of x is going to be equal to summation over all k values which typically belongs to r and then we are going to capture all the details. We are talking about a high pass filter in the form of psi. So, this psi is my wavelet filter, this phi is my father filter, the scaling function, low pass filter and high pass filter. This high pass filter is going to give us all the details which will be captured by beta of j k and this will be beta of j k into once again 2 to the power j by 2 and then um, psi of 2 to the power j of x minus k. Now, these beta values can be once again captured using similar integral formula and I can write down this will be g j of x into 2 to the power j by 2 into psi of 2 to the power j of x into dx and it will be 2 to the power j of x minus k and then we will take the derivative with reference to dx. So, that is the correct formula and that is pretty much about it. So, this is the entire framework, a function which gets represented in different subspaces. These are laddered subspaces and that together gives us the essence of multi-resolution analysis. Now, the question is, 
can we really understand it by virtue of solving a simple problem and the answer of this question is why not so let's look at one very simple problem and we'll fit in this framework to be able to really understand what exactly is going on so i'm going to keep the framework right over here and the span and the corresponding changes will bring out on this particular part so that it will be very clear as to what exactly is going on let's take a case of a very simple good looking signal and let's say that this signal is a linear signal and mathematically we can represent this signal as signal f of x so that it is going to be equal to x uh, when my x is between let's say 0 and 3 and it will be 0 elsewhere and I can very well plot such kind of a signal this is my x axis this is my f of x and this will be till 3 it's a linear kind of a signal and be beyond that it's going to give us all zeros now we are going to jot down the tasks so that the real meaning of multi resolution analysis will be very clear let's say I want to first of all calculate f0 of x which belongs to v0 then I want to calculate f1 of x which belongs to v1 and then also g0 of x which belongs to w0 and by virtue of finding out the connection between these three I should be able to prove that v of 1 is equal to v0 orthogonally added with w0 so let's see if we can accomplish this task absolutely quickly so first things first so these are the tasks 1 2 and 3 so towards accomplishing the first task let's see if I can figure out how f0 of x which belongs to v0 would typically look and now it's very clear that the moment I say f0 of x I'm saying that z is equal to 0 so the scale of analysis is going to be equal to 1 upon 2 to the power z that is 1 upon 2 to the power 0 which is equal to 1 so my window of analysis for finding out representations of function in v0 would be 1 and the span gets decided accordingly so f0 of x would require span of 1 for one single translation and so I have a range from 0 to 3 so I will require three such spans 0 to 1 1 to 2 and 2 to 3 and my k value would run from 0 to 2 and then all the way all the while I will be talking about alpha 0 k into 2 to the power z by 2 goes 1 and then I am left with phi of 2 to the power z also becomes 1 and x minus k as simple as that plug in the k values and we will get the exact representation of f0 of x the real challenge lies in the fact that I should be able to calculate the exact representations and values of alpha 0 k so let's begin with the first value that is alpha 0 0 so the meaning of alpha 0 0 is z is equal to 0 and k is equal to 0 so I should be able to solve this integral and I'm going to plug in the values in this particular formula z is 0 and k is also equal to 0 so I'm talking about f0 of x into since my k is equal to 0 I'm talking about phi of x into dx now let's pick a very simple case of har kind of phi of x so har phi of x is going to look like this if this is my x axis and if this is my phi of x then it is going to look like this between 0 and 1 it will have a value of 1 so let's plug that over here since this span is from 0 to 1 the range of this integral will be from 0 to 1 and between 0 and 1 f0 of x is equal to x we have already written this down so this will be x into 1 into dx and this will be equal to x square by 2 ranging from 0 to 1 that is equal to 1 by 2 and that's how we can calculate alpha 0 0 